bless you. Let's open the scriptures. We, sh we share. I want to pray with you. If we read Luke 15, Luke 15, uh, from verse 1. 12, verse 1. Maybe we can read to 7, but I won't read all verses. He said, now all the publicans and sinners were drawing near unto him to hear him. And both the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receives sinners and eateth with them. Verse 3. And he spake unto them this parable, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, and having lost one of them, doth not leave the ninety-nine, ninety-nine, in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he had found it, he layeth it on his shoulder, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and his neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that even so there shall be joy in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Can you see that? So let's pray. Thank you Lord for your word in Jesus name. Amen. I have read 1 to 7. When I was reading this uh, this morning I began to see what God has entrusted us with this year. God wants us to be example. And to be example of Jesus. In fact, what Jesus came for, died for, we have to live that kind of life. Know that this year, you'll be having many spectators who are looking at you, looking at your life. How you live, your character, it will be of reaching out to someone. Tell your neighbor, say, I want to win souls. Can you tell your neighbor, I want to win souls? So, right winning souls. You know, I have learned that winning souls, we can speak it easy. But it must start with winning ourselves. Together. When we see Jesus here, we could see Jesus risking his life. He said he risked his reputation. When the Pharisees were asking him, why is he spending time with sinners. Because by then, when you are a Christian, or you are a follower of God, you need to separate yourself. Jesus said, he spoke a parable of showing he doesn't care about his reputation. What he care is to take people from the dark to the light. He spoke that he doesn't care about how you see him. He rejoices when he wins one person. That's the example that he was giving. He showed it by sheep that he can risk his life for one soul. He doesn't care what people will say, what 
elders of the church say. What other people could say. He was ready to risk anything to win other people. So that people will have salvation. That's what Jesus came for. If we read John 10 from 11 to 16 if you can see that, you will see that Jesus was carrying. Jesus could go out. When he speaks this parable, he shows that his business was of winning souls. It was not so important for him to, to have materials. materials. But what is important for him was to win souls. If you read there, it says, especially verse 11, it says, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. You could hear that he said, verse 12, he says, He that is a hireling, not a shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, beholdeth the wolf coming, leaveth the sheep and fleeth. Here, Jesus was showing that he risked his life. He is a good shepherd because once he makes sure that he win you, he even fight for you. When the enemies come, he does not go away from you. You, you know, most of the times we know that when things, people say when the days are dark, friends are full. But not when you are a Christian. A Christian who can resemble Jesus here. When Christian, other Christians have got tough times. If you have won them to the Lord, you will fight for them. You, you, you defend them. Look at verse 13. He says a hireling, he fleeth because he's a hireling and cannot for the sheep. Look at verse 14. I'm the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Here Jesus was proud about the people he was winning. Can, can I tell you this? We, we must reach a level where we are proud of the people we are happy that we are winning them. I, I know what is happening now. We, we are in a year of the survival of the fittest. Whoever thinks he is powerful than another one can prove a point. But this is the time now that your heart must beat with the heartbeat of God. And when we look at the people, we see what Jesus came for, lived for, and died for. I don't know if you are hearing me. And your, your job is not to kill others or jeopardize others, but to win them to the Lord. You know, uh, I, I'll, I'll give you an example. I don't forget that. When my church was less than 100 people, I, I was praying for people. When I was praying, I reached this old lady. I don't forget this story. I was praying, loving these people. When they fall down, I'll, I'll be like, in my heart, I'll be saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you. I touched this old lady, she when went down. When she went, when she woke up, she said, for a long time, she was asleep. She said, my child, I saw a big, very big vision. In that vision, I saw you having a very big house. Everything. Don't be tired on what you're doing. 
That lady was telling me that there's a blessing in doing God's way. I don't know if you're hearing me. There's a blessing. I wanted to when tell you the same. When you are winning others, God, God will never will leave, leave you. You are his hand. You are his mind. You are his feet. He will make sure that he provides for you. If you want to be blessed, God will provide for you. Care for others. Be careful to bless others. Win others. Don't destroy them. I don't know if you're hearing that. And that. if you do that, you can make it. You'll, You'll be, be a solution to me. You know, when I read verse 16, I read verse 16. look here, you'll see. On verse 16, just go there. Jesus said, and the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. They shall hear my voice, and they shall become one flock and, and one shepherd. That was Jesus was saying. Jesus was saying, there are still many. I'm not satisfied with what I have. Jesus never got satisfied by the people he won. I remember one time when he spent time very close to the well. Just waiting for only one woman. And that one woman was a solution to many in the city. I don't know if you're hearing that. Sometimes, if God is sending you to win others, he can send you to one. Can't you that one is a door of many? Don't be tired. Don't be tired because you are speaking with the one person who does not listen to you. You might be speaking with many you can see. I don't know if you are hearing me. So Jesus knew. He said there are other sheep. I must also bring them. In other words, Jesus spoke this statement as if he was satisfied or maybe people were saying many people are following him. Many people are following him. You have got a Jesus said, no, 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 no. I don't have a big church. I'm still in the business of winning souls. I don't know if you're hearing that. I told you earlier that if you want to win souls, you must do only this one thing. Make sure that Jesus win you first. Write it down. Jesus must win you first. If we read Matthew 16, verse 25, you know the scripture. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. And this who loses his life for my sake shall find it. Allow Jesus to find you. I don't know if you're hearing me. Allow Jesus to find you so you. that you find out. Listen, deal with yourself, yourself before him. He has called you to be an instrument. He has, he has brought you here so that he can use you to many. Listen, Christianity is not when you receive that car. It's not when you receive that money. It's when you use them to win souls. That is Christianity. The ability of moving forward and win others through what you are having is Christianity. Do you know why you cannot tell someone about Jesus? Because somewhere you are still trapped by Satan. There are some people who know you. Can you see when you are known somewhere? You are doing one, two, three, you are known. You cannot declare, you cannot stand up and say Jesus is Lord. But if you know you have been won, you have lost your life, whether you are rejected, 
they don't want you you say I don't care my life belongs to Jesus if you believe say amen how many Christians today who are here they know they want to live for Christ if you want to live for Christ by your character you can win them by how you speak you can win them anything you do you can win them deal with yourself lose your life to him you will be an instrument this year if you believe shout hallelujah ask your neighbor say my friend do you want to be an instrument of God this year make sure that there is nothing you have that does not correspond with hatred if you are a Christian there are things you must cut around you you must remove it so that you become a vessel a vessel that God wants to use I don't know if you are hearing me you know I will tell you this I read in the scriptures I found that all the people that they went out to preach who become a vessel of God, who, God, God, who separated themselves aside for God, who sanctified themselves and allowed God to sanctify themselves also. Even when they were sent sometimes they could not even go and preach. You find that God just take over when they are speaking. I don't know if you are here. If you can reach a level where souls is what you need for God. You'll be surprised. When you are still speaking, the Holy Spirit will fall on them. Something will happen. I have learned so much about Peter. Peter, when he was still speaking in the house of Cornelius, he could not even finish his statements. There was issues of process. He is supposed to teach them. They are supposed to rise and go for baptism. And from there he must lay hands so that they receive Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will not allow them. God will not wait. This shows that God is waiting for us to stand up. Even before we finish what he said we must do, you will find God doing it. Today, if you are believing that you want to win so, before you act, God will act with you. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Before you speak, before you even finish speaking, you'll be surprised you are not alone. God is confirming what you are saying because it's from God. I don't know if you are hearing that. We need Christians who are not afraid, who can lose their life for God, who are ready for God to be instrument, to be pillars in the house of God for the sake of many who are lost to come to God. I'm giving you this message. It's your message this year. If you can win many, I declare to you, I give you this word. God will bless you abundantly. If you believe, shout hallelujah. In Matthew 10, 28, Jesus spoke ways which were important. He said, if you are losing your life, so this time, do not be afraid for those who kill the body. But they cannot kill the soul. You know, many of us, we have got fear of reaching out. We have got fear. Fear of doing what God wants us to do. Sometimes it's our circumstances that are causing us not to move out and reach others. Sometimes it's because we are still looking on ourselves, on our image. Here Jesus spoke this statement. We need to fear God. This year we've got a greater assignment. A greater assignment. 
we must be afraid of this God. Because he can kill the body, even the soul. I don't know if you're hearing that. If God speaks, let's obey. You know, when the Bible says this, it shows that sometimes God will send you where you don't wish to go. Let me say it again. Sometimes God will send you where you don't wish to go. And you don't understand that. Remember Philip, what happened to you? Living, Living a revival in Samaria. Samaria. And went to the desert. Look what happened to him in the spirit. There's a promotion in the spirit. When you obey God to send you where you don't want to go. There's a great promotion. Don't wish to go where you want to go. You can lose the blessing of God. I don't know if you are hearing me. There were some times I used to go for crusade. When I reached there, I hear in my spirit, don't take offering. In that crusade, I'll just say, don't even take offering of this place. Because winning soul and money, they don't correspond. I don't know if you're hearing me. They don't correspond. If we read the Bible, you realize that winning soul is winning soul. Mammon is mammon. I don't know if you're hearing me. So don't, don't look at the issue of where to get money, buy instruments, whatever, whatever. You don't need to do big things. You can win your family in the house by the life you are living, the character you are having. You can affect your friends. They know you are serving the living God. How can you save multitudes when you are failing by a mere friend of yours? Your friend is controlling you. He's making you to do what is wrong. And you know this thing is wrong. But you cannot tell your friends because you need a company. We need Christians who are tired of their situation who believe that they can speak for God without any favor. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you are hearing me. Listen, if you reach that level, we can't preach about sin to you. If you reach that level, we can't talk about altar call to you. It's a small thing because already you are presenting Jesus. How can you present what you don't have? You are presenting Jesus wherever you go. And if you are presenting and Jesus, it means you have Jesus in you. Listen, if God is blessing you, don't look at the blessings of materials. Look how far you speak about Jesus. How far is your family know that you are saying? What about your friends? What about your friends? your boyfriend uh, and boyfriend your girlfriend. Yeah, how you now? What about your neighbors? This is not the time yes, of defending each other. This is the time of winning each other to God. If you want to win others to God, I pray today you receive anointing that will make you to be a soul winner. In the name of Jesus. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Look here, in Matthew 16, Matthew 16, somewhere there, very close there, 25 to 27, 25 to 27, it says, what can we give to exchange of our soul? You could see that soul is so important. It's the biggest business. This is the biggest business. The biggest business. Business whole. When Jesus was speaking about this business, he said, he spoke a parable, he said there was a one rich man that year he had many, many things. He harvest enough. He even extends his bands. And then he harvested. He had enough to live the rest of his life. So he's, he told him, he said, Now, so this is the time to rest. But that time, you see, you see, 
your soul is required. So you have wasted time. I, I, I wish we must stop wasting time. Tell them, let's stop wasting time. Looking at your car like you go with it in heaven. The way you dress, your house, everything around, bringing pride that will lock you down. If you want Jesus to win you, there are things you need to cut on you. And so that you become a right instrument. You know, I have really realized if you can take it from me there is no blessing that can satisfy your soul. Even when you get one million you search for ten million when ten million has come thirty million, hundred million you will die searching for money. I don't know if you are hearing me. There is nothing satisfying. Nothing. You know, we are praying now, we are asking God to give us this, give us this. Those things are useless. We need to win others now. When you meet someone, sorry, I'm a Christian. What about you? You hear the person say, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in this so called prophet. Now you say, hey, no. I'm talking about Jesus. He's coming back. He's coming back. You know, one person you speak with this person, God can send you to another. I don't know if you're hearing me. I don't know if you're hearing me. Listen, whatever you are heavy, if you can use it to win souls, just to win souls, to speak with one person, you know Jesus loves you. I know Jesus loves you. If you are speaking about when you reach home, God can show you the problem of others. He can show you. He knows your heart. I might be preaching to some people that God wants to use from now. I might be preaching to some people that, that God wants to raise from now. You know what happened to me? I will tell you this. Every day I wanted to go out. When Mandela was starting, many people chased me from this house. When I reached there, they say, hey, we don't want people like you. I remember one day I reached another house. When I reached that house, they opened a door for me. I was sharing the word of God. I was not aware that I was wearing the socks which have got a potato at the bear. When I was speaking with them about Jesus, they were looking at my shoes and my socks. So I never thought they were not listening. So when they were laughing, I thought they were enjoying my message. But when I finish, they say, are you a pastor? I say, yes. They say, wait, we want to give you something. They brought socks. They gave me socks. I didn't have socks. But I said to them, to be honest with you, don't look at my socks. And you bring these socks. I don't need your socks. I want your soul to be saved. Listen, sometimes you'll be sent to a place where you don't, they insult you. Look what the scripture says. Up your feet. Don't shake the same curse with them. But you have done what you have done. Let us not wait for the Sunday. Let us not wait for Wednesday. This is the time Jesus is coming back. Let us not wait for Wednesday. This is the time Jesus is coming back. 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 This is the time Start in your family. Start in your family. Hey, start in your family. 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 Start in your family.
When you are starting, you want to say, can you be saved? They say, you. You will hear them say, Utwezi John. Have you left Johannes? If you have left Johannes, what are you going to do about the They will show you the shortcomings. As I'm speaking with you here, I'm telling you the highest assignment you can do this year. Enter the business of our Father. Enter the business of our Father. And win souls. Win your neighbor. Win your friend. Win everybody. Listen, some people they don't want to greet you so that you must not tell them about Jesus. They just, when you say hello, they I look at you like, So these are the same people. You tell them, Maki, Maki, Maki. you go to Maki and say, Maki, I've been greeting you. I know you didn't see. I wanted to tell you about someone who saved me. That person can save you. I know Jesus died on the cross and Jesus is coming back. Let's stop looking at the mistakes of others. We tell them about the Savior who saved you. Coming to church is a waste if we cannot send the message we have received to other people. This is the time of rising up and tell our neighbors, our friends, our brothers, our sisters about the Savior we are who saved us. You are if not, we are not saved. Because many of you, you have got reason of not telling them. And those reasons makes you to sin against God. Can I tell you this? It's useless to have all. I have seen that. I have seen that. One day, one day I bought a land somewhere. I thought buying that land I'll be very much excited. And uh, I thought my soul would be satisfied. When I was going to internet, I saw a better land than that. You buy this car, there's a better car than that. You buy this, this. So these things are useless. Let me prophesy someone today. I pray that anointing will open your eyes today and you will be win many you will win many to go if you believe shout hallelujah how many of you know that by winning many to God, you are doing God's work? And if you are doing God's work, He will never leave you. Listen, there are some people here, others they don't need you to talk. You just need to buy grocery for them. I don't know if you're hearing me. Listen to this. Just buy grocery for them. I'm sorry, sorry, Mama. Uh, I'm here to buy you grocery. Yes, you don't mm. even talk about your church. On Sunday, they will say, we want to go. Because they have seen you already. They know you are going to church. But they don't understand your God. Nobody can eat your thing. And you find that he does not listen to you. Let me tell you about nobody can eat your food. And you find that he can't listen to you. So if you want to win people, buy them food. Speak Jesus to them. There are many things. That's why Jesus, when he spoke with Peter and other pieces, leave those fishes. From today, you will be a fisher of men. There's methods that you can develop to win many. You can win your neighbor. You can win your boyfriend. You can win your girlfriend. You can win somebody. Every day, win someone, tell someone, you will realize that you are becoming an example. You are becoming an example. Let me try to finish. The reason why you gossip or lie is because you don't have time to talk about Jesus. If you have got time to talk about Jesus, sorry, sorry, uh, you won't stand up, brother. You won't come and say, you, you saw that lady. Can you stand up? You see this lady? You saw her. 
Look at how she's wearing. So she's ugly. So don't be close to her this way. And uh, do you know she wants you? Because liars, they, can, they are creative. They, are, they, they can speak everything. Can we change those lies? When we come to this person, we don't talk about this. We say, my brother, you know, I fellowship in Charis. I'm a Christian. This person says, oh, I fellowship in assemblies of God. Assemblies of God. So how far with your Christianity? So the person said, no, you know what? You will hear. You will hear the person talking stories. No verse. You begin to bring verses. My brother, the Bible says this. The Bible says this. The Bible says, says, you will hear this person be convicted by the word of God from your mouth. You have warned your brother. You know what we are doing? When we come to this one, we speak about this one. When we come to this one, we speak about that one. Even now, what is happening now? You people, you are no longer talking about Jesus. You are talking about us. We are ministers of the gospel. Stop talking about us. Makaranis are never die for anybody. There is no pastor or prophet or apostle who died for anybody. Let's talk about Jesus to our neighbors, friends, whoever. If if, if you believe, say amen. How many of you are ready to do that? Are you ready to do that? Let me show you maybe only one scripture. Maybe it's then we can close. Let's read 1 Peter 2, chapter 2, verse 11 to 12. I don't know how I can tell you this. Verse 11 to 12. But I want to have classes of this. Beloved, I beseech you as sojourners and pilgrims to abstain from flesh lust, which war against the soul. Having your behavior seemingly seem among the Gentiles, that wherein they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they behold, glorify God in the day of of visitation. Amen. I just want to talk about this day of visitation. I want to tell you that what you need to do now is not to look on what are they saying about you. Conduct yourself as a soul winner. As an instrument that God wants to use. Even if they judge you wrongly, there will be a day of visitation. I don't know if you're hearing me. Let me try to tell you what you don't know, which I was told. Many people are talking about Charis Church as a church today. But I can tell you I've been discouraged so much. They didn't know that there will be a day of visitation. Many people were speaking against you, trying to pull you down, fighting you, showing that your God is not working anything. They don't know the day of visitation. On that day, God will silence their mouth. They are talking, and they've been talking. But conduct yourself as a pilgrim, as a soldier. As a person who knows that this place is not home, conduct yourself believing that the day of visitation will come where God will honor you. I'm hearing that there are some people today here that God want to honor. I said, God want to honor you. This is your day of visitation. Even when he blesses you, don't leave him. Win others for him. Don't win others for yourself. Do it for him. There's a day of visitation. 
in that day, you won't be ashamed. How you conduct yourself, there will be wages of that day. I don't know if you are hearing me. You know, when people talk about you or speak against you, you speak about Jesus. You carry on speaking when about Jesus. Jesus. This wow. must be Tabai your topic Aibel. of 2018. If you want God to bless you, I don't know if you are hearing me. Last time I told people that many people were coming to Charis. They wanted me to what I'm saying about what other people are saying. And I told them I'm not called for that. The moment I take this microphone, I talk about Jesus. I preach the Bible. You are in a wrong place if you are here for stories. You are in a wrong place. We speak there's a day where God will visit you. It will start from today. I say it is starting from today. If you are ready to win souls, it is starting from today. So check if you are conducting yourself. If you are conducting yourself in a right way, I want to tell you this year you'll be a symbol to many people who will run to God. I prophesy some people I'm giving you this word. I see you as a symbol. When people reach you, you'll be like a rock. Whatever that touches you will break. I say it will break. And God will create everything that comes to you. God will create but he will allow people to reach you. Let me prophesy you. I see you as a symbol a symbol of salvation. God wants to raise you. God wants to speak through you. God wants to make you a fisherman. A fisherman. Say I'm a fisherman. Many will come to God because of me. Are you ready to do that? Listen. When you leave this church today, tell the people who are telling you stories of moving you away from God. Tell them, say, hey, I am the instrument in the hand of the mighty God. Whoever comes to me must get salvation Whatever God gives, it must be through me this year. I see you as an instrument. I see as an instrument. I see as an instrument. In the hand of the Almighty God. In the hand of the Almighty God. If you believe, shout hallelujah. If you live here, what you need to do, don't talk with you. Don't read scriptures for others. Read scriptures for yourself. Deal with yourself. You will hear God say, hey, you remember the message. Go to that one. I know what this God can do. One day, this God did this to me. When I was beginning the ministry, I don't forget that day. And he can do that to you. I was asleep. God can use dreams also. And I was shown that I must go to Oliphant. We used to buy an Oliphant there. And then when I pass office, when I'm coming to the school, I will meet a brother. I knew his name. And I must tell this brother about him. We are looking something like that. That day, I never thought I would go there. I never thought. Uh, on the afternoon, I'm remembering when I'm going there. We used to go by foot on the other side. I began to remember when I'm going there. When I was going there, I began to say, ah, I was hearing that I will meet this brother. And you know, in this spot, and I must tell him about Jesus. 
The moment when I turn facing them, I see the brother coming. I was afraid that day. I began to fear God that day. And I realized that we are lacking things like this. You know what we want now? I want to be a prophet to see the problems of other people. And it ends there. Be a prophet of bringing people to God. I don't know if you are hearing me. Of bringing people. Dream about them. Share the scriptures to them. Win them. You know that day I was afraid. And I said, oh, brother, I dreamed yesterday. He could not believe me. I began to tell him. I was shocked that day. This thing began to move like this. Can I tell you this? I see you beginning your journey. I see you beginning your journey. Are you ready for your journey? Are you ready for your journey?